Well, hundreds of flood-ravaged residents in Sydney are calling for urgent action over concerns of an approaching third La Nina. 7 News reporter Matthew Kastunen is in Sydney for us. Uh, Matt, good morning to you. Uh, now, raising the Warragamba Dam wall, that's always been an issue, but this time they're talking about lowering the capacity of the dam. Good morning, Mon. That is correct. There's obviously been a lot of concern and apprehension from communities in Windsor and along the Hawkesbury Nepean due to these floods. We've seen three major events in the past 18 months or so. In particular, the fears link back to La Nina. There is a prediction that it'll be the third time in a row returning this spring. Residents are very fearful. They were taking part in a meeting yesterday. Let's take a listen to some of those. We talk about these poor regional areas that they watch their dams dry up to nothing. We sit there with this great big monstrosity sitting here at 100%, we're staring down the barrel of another couple of floods. We know the rain's coming. Why can't we release some water immediately? Now, the debate around the Warragamba Dam, of course, is a big issue. This follows the release of the flooding report into the Lismore floods. There wasn't a recommendation to raise or lower the wall, but residents in Windsor are saying that reducing the capacity will lead it to less likely of having a flood if we do see major rains. The government saying, though, that's probably not something they're looking at, but, of course, they are still demanding action. So an issue still very on the minds of a lot of residents out there. Mon? Indeed it is, uh, Matthew, and we're going to be following that up this morning. We've got a professor of water who's coming in to discuss whether that is possible because they're saying that they want the capacity to be lowered by about 12 metres. So is that enough if we get another flood? Well, the residents are asking some very sensible questions. They are. We'll get those answers today. All right, let's get some more news now. Here's Sal. On the Sunrise News feed this morning, the new La Nina forecast that has sparked outrage across the Hawkesbury River in Western Sydney. After three major floods in 15 months, the community came together yesterday to try to stop a fourth. Traumatised residents say enough is enough, demanding water storage levels be reduced to stop the Warragamba Dam from spilling over. And for more, I'm joined this morning by journalists Angela Mollard and Joe Hildebrand. Angela, morning to you. Look, the dam is now full. Mm. Um, the, the state government's plan to build a higher wall mm. is going to take years. Residents say they simply can't wait that long and can we start to gradually reduce some water now? What do you think? I think we should be reducing the water now. We need to take care of people. It's particularly, we've got better forecasts than we've ever had. So if there is going to be La Nina, we know now what that looks like. We know the severity of that. Look, I think it's a, obviously it's a multi-strand um, approach. It's got to be community level, it's got to be personal level, it's got to be um, uh, regional level and, of course, federal level. But, you know, the ultimate solution is that we have to build on higher ground or we have to have those walls. But realistically, all you can really do is prepare, respond when it happens, and then, you know, that recovery. But the dams, yep, let's drop the water levels. Well, look at that damage there, Joe. So, I mean, it doesn't take a lot. The, the residents there just want to say, hey, yeah. what have we learnt yeah. since last time? And that is a very simple and a very powerful question, isn't it? And at it's the moment, very, it's unclear. It's a very simple question, but I suppose it's also a very complicated question as well because, I mean, I remember when we spent, what, $2 billion building a desalination plant because the dam water levels got too low mm. at Warragamba. And so you're always trying to mitigate, OK, what is the flood risk versus what is the drought risk? And that, as Dorothea McKellar said, is the nature of our country. It is, a, it is a land where nature is harsh. Um, it is probably going to get harsher as, as climate change. I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the climate change isn't going to get any better. We're just trying to keep it where it is. So I think, as Ange said, we just have to accept like the serenity prayer says, accept the things we cannot change and prepare for them. And it's deflating for the residents in those areas, though, to try to just sit back and accept, isn't it? Do you think releasing any of the water would help? Uh, look, I... Uh... You know, that's up to hydrologists. I mean, they yeah. just had an inquiry into this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it would, but again, you run the risk. Every time you re reduce the water levels, you run the risk of running out of water when... Yeah. When there's the not enough happens. rain. We just, so... It's not so long ago we had droughts, is it? Yeah, that's, no, that's right. You're not wrong. Residents in those areas are now at the stage where they're just saying we're not going to rebuild we're, just because they've accepted that it's going to happen well, again. you know, towns like Lismore, they almost become untenable, don't they? Mm. And, and, and you have to, you know, that must be heartbreaking for those people, but we have to have long-term solutions to, 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 to solve the issue. It's a big day today. It is World Senior Citizen. Much JT. Well, hundreds of flood affected residents have gathered to call for urgent flood assistance ahead of a third La Nina forecast. At the centre of discussion was the Warragamba Dam, in particular, its spillage causing so much of the devastation across Sydney. Still sitting at 100%, residents want the levels lowered to prevent yet another repeat.
Months on and communities around New South Wales are still facing the flood crisis. Football sized sinkholes have been left behind and fear among residents remains. And experts warn La Nina is likely to return for the third time in a row this spring. They're forecasting that September could be up to 16 metres, which is two metres above the last flood. If that, if that was to happen, that would be absolutely catastrophic. Windsor resident Alan refuses to reinstall his house after being flooded three times mm. in just 15 months. The level came to approximately here um, this time. Uh, the, the March flood came to here and the uh, flood back in March last year was down to here. We've removed all of our furniture. Uh, as I said, we're remiss to put anything back because uh, pending this uh, forecast for another flood in September, we just kind of too nervous and traumatised to, to do much other than uh, sit and wait it out for some certainty. Alan is one of the many flood victims urging the government to lower the level of the Warragamba Dam. We hope that they listen to the experts. The experts are saying that reducing the water in the dam by 12 metres will reduce the flooding through the Hawkesbury, particularly in Windsor, or specifically in Windsor, by two metres. That means that the last three floods that we've had, we would not be inundated with water. Authorities, however, remain focused on raising the dam wall, a project that will take several years. Locals say this isn't quick enough. That's of no help to us. It's 10 years away. What we need is emergency flood mitigation now. While it's been ruled out due to fears for Sydney's drinking water supply security, the science backs it. Professor Stuart Khan is from the Global Water Institute at the University of New South Wales. Last night he addressed a packed meeting of politicians and flood victims. The reason we talk about 12 metres as the magic number for, for which we might drop the volume is because that's how the gates are arranged on Warragamba Dam. We don't release water out of the bottom of the dam. The, the water is released from the gates at the top of the dam wall. Uh, and the bottom of the gates is the 12 metre mark. So that's a realistic opportunity to be able to use the currently engineered uh, water system, water storage, to be able to release down to that level. In this way, Professor Khan says Sydney's drinking water levels can be sustainably managed. We've got one of the biggest economies in the world. It, surely these sorts of things, this type of infrastructure can be looked at. We talk about these poor regional areas that they watch their dams dry up to nothing. We sit there with this great big monstrosity sitting here at 100%, with staring down the barrel of another couple of floods. And joining us now is Professor Stuart Khan and Windsor resident Alan Pradames. And welcome to you both. Uh, Professor, we'll start with, with you. Uh, it was a really important meeting that you had yesterday. We just want to start by asking you about uh, your belief that lowering the, the, the capacity by 12 metres would stop many homes, all homes, from, from being flooded? Certainly not all homes, so it's really important to make sure that we don't give people unrealistic hope about this opportunity. Um, there are multiple sources of water that flood into the Hawkesbury Nepean. Um, the amount of flood mitigation that you can build into Warragamba Dam is always going to be finite, but you're looking for opportunities to be able to improve the flood mitigation by being able to reduce the ultimate full uh, flood peak height uh, as well as being able to provide some delay to the flood peaks occurring. So that gives people the opportunity to make good use of the evacuation routes and prepare themselves for, for the floods that are coming. Right. Professor, the, it, it, as Mon said, the it's just brilliant to see that this dialogue is happening now. A lot of people say it's overdue, but just listening to some of the, the questions from residents there, you can hear what could only be described as anguish, des desperation, desperation yep. in the voices. So their argument is, if we can do anything at all to stop the businesses and homes going under, why on earth aren't we doing it? The argument on the other side is that it might affect drinking water supplies. Correct. So this is a really important point, that if we were to lower the full supply level in Warragamba Dam by 12 metres, uh, that would be about 800 gigalitres of flood mitigation capacity, airspace, that, that we'd free up. Uh, and by doing that, we would have an impact to Sydney's drinking water supply security. Sydney's prone to droughts. We need to be able to make sure that we don't make that situation any worse, which means that part of that solution has to be involve... Sorry. Um, part of that solution has to involve uh, making sure that we replace that drinking water supply security through rainfall independent supplies such as seawater desalination. But isn't that do doable? Like, isn't that the question? Like, in the, in the short term, our drinking water supplies is it fair to say, aren't at great risk. So if you're looking at a, at a short-term measure to prevent people's homes and businesses going under, lower the dam. 
I think we, we can look at the science there around what we know about the short term. So in the short term we do know that we've got all of these factors that are primed for lots of runoff into Warragamba Dam. The dam is full, the, the catchment is soaking wet which means that when it rains we do get runoff uh, and the long range forecasts are as you say for an El Nino, the Southern Oscillation Index is, is pointing towards a lot more, more rainfall. So we can look at the balance of risks in terms of whether we're going to have more runoff and flooding um, or the possibility that we might end up in the next six months going back towards a flood mm. cycle. And we have to be prepared for that possibility because sometimes it really does come on very, very suddenly. OK, talking about cost, how much would it cost to build another desal plant and, and, and time-wise? Because we know that raising the dam wall, we're talking about $2 billion or something, and, uh, you know, and taking years. Yeah, so with the desal plant, there are two things that we can do. One is that we can change the operational protocol for the desal plant that we already have. Currently, we turn it off when the dams are full. It's, it's still running at the moment because of water quality issues. But normally we turn it off when the dams are full and we flick it back on as we start to um, run out of water. Uh, we can maintain a more reliable drinking water supply by keeping that plant running all of the time. Right. And then the plant that we currently have, the one that we built, supplies about 90 gigalitres per year of water. It was designed to be doubled in capacity actually quite quickly. A lot of the infrastructure is already there, the pipes that, that bring the seawater into the plant. They can already take twice the volume. So doubling the capacity of the plant is a relatively simple job compared to building a new plant. Mm. Mm. Let's go to Alan now. Uh, Alan, I can't imagine how difficult this discussion is for you to hear when we're talking about a deluge of, of wet weather coming towards us again, a repeat of what we've seen. Um, you know more acutely than anyone how devastating this would be uh, for you and for the broader Windsor community. Yeah, yeah, Matt, thanks. Look, we certainly appreciate the opportunity of, um, of uh, raising our voices today and, and, uh, and to have someone like Dr Khan um, championing our cause. Yeah, it's traumatic. Um, it's absolutely traumatic, as I showed the levels in our house uh, in, the, in the clip yesterday. Um, there, there's people far, far worsely affected by us, and whilst that looks devastating for us, there are many other residents whose whole houses went under, so we certainly feel for them. But, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, the... With some confidence, the, um, the the long range forecasting has been has been spot on for the last three floods. So we are we are very nervous about the same thing happening to us in the imminent future. Alan, I'm hearing that the community there, that people who have never felt depressed, are walking around with their shoulders slumped and are just absolutely mm. beside themselves. This discussion about raising the wall uh, and 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 really we're we're seeing inaction at this point, how frustrating is that and what would your message to government be? Yeah, absolutely frustrating. You know, we're all extremely resilient to these things, but um, you, know, you get knocked down and you keep, get it, and you keep standing up and, and uh, you know, there's that great expression, if you get knocked down six times, get up for seven. Um, but the, the whole community is traumatised, there is absolutely no question about that. And, um, so the, the, the comment to, to, to government loud and clear is to listen to experts like Dr Khan. There is a short term solution and it's to re re reduce the water in the dam. The dam, we know, we've heard all those stories that it's not a mitigation wall, but it can be used for mitigation purposes if they reduce the wall. The water will be recouped um, as it has been in the past. So it's loud and clear. There's all sorts of other solutions, raising the wall, etc. but they're long term solutions. And they all add up to a better result for everyone in the Hawkesbury. But right now, right here, right now, we need the water to be reduced. That's our, that's our cry to the government. Just listen to, if you don't want to listen to the residents and, and the trauma that we're trying to express, can you listen to the experts? Alan, 15 months ago, before these three floods, you were living a normal life. Let's just hope that, that you and the wonderful community out there can get back to, to, to life as you deserve to live it. Thank you so much for being with us, Alan, and uh, Professor Khan, we really appreciate your insights today. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. Professor.